So today's video, I have to start off with a little bit of a story, a little bit of a tale, if you will. And this story, this tale, is about somebody out there in the audience that's probably just like you, if not you the person, because I suspect you are finally watching this video that you've asked for in a number of ways. You see, somebody out there in the audience, somebody who watches my videos, who's heard about me in some way or another, really, really wanted me to make content about Robert Reich. And when I say they really wanted me to make content about Robert Reich, I'm talking about this person going above and beyond to let me know that I need to debunk Robert Reich. They left me comments on my videos, they've appeared in my live streams, they've direct messaged me on Discord, they put Robert Reich videos in my content that I should respond to section on my Discord, they've messaged me or added me on every single public platform that I'm on, and on top of that, they even created a Robert Reich parody account and started replying to my tweets randomly demanding that I debunk them. Now. I want you to know, Mr. Person that's out there, or Miss, who knows, look at me, so progressive. This is a video debunking Robert Reich, congratulations. However, the person responsible for this video that you should be thanking is one Kirk Wilcox, because I've been watching a lot of his content, I really enjoy his channel, and he's done a lot of videos about content creators and things that I wouldn't normally respond to, so this has made me more interested in responding to different things. And he may have even done a video about this specific video that I'm talking about, and if so, I definitely recommend you check it out. His channel will be linked in the description of this video. But without further ado, for you out there, Mr. I'm gonna parody Robert Reich until Sean responds to him, this is the video, and I'm going to be responding to Should We Abolish Billionaires? America now has more billionaires than at any time in history, while most Americans are struggling to make ends meet. So there's a couple of things that we should go over that you guys might not know about Robert Reich. First and foremost, Robert Reich is not an economist, not in any way, shape, or form. He is the former labor secretary under President Bill Clinton, so Robert Reich is a politician. That's why Robert Reich just opened this video with the complete non sequitur political statement. The fact is, more billionaires existing does not make anybody poorer, despite the fact that Robert Reich opened this video with that statement or those two disconnected statements that have nothing to do with one another back to back. In fact, the only relationship somebody making billions of dollars has with poverty in the world is typically they make those billions of dollars by serving a broad swath of the population not just in the United States, but worldwide, thus alleviating poverty, aka the exact opposite interaction that Robert Reich wants you to think there is between billionaires and poverty. Now, while it's incredibly easy to fall into the trap of thinking economics is a zero-sum game, somebody else has more, therefore you have less, we all understand that this is wrong conceptually. All you have to do is turn back the clock far enough and people will get it. When humans were hunter-gatherers in their natural state, of poverty, nobody became wealthy because they stole from those poor hunter-gatherers. There weren't more billionaires back then or more billionaires per capita because, again, wealth isn't taken from the poor, it is created by people who are entrepreneurial in spirit. Now, if you think that's too far back and you think it's different somehow to be nostalgic for a period that's a little bit closer in time and you're one of those people who pretend that post-World War II was the golden age in the United States of America, where you could work a job, churning a factory somewhere in town, come back, support a family, get yourself a car, own a home, blah, 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 all that nonsense, then all I'll ask you is would you trade your position in this current year all of the advancements in technology, all the benefits of the modern society to go back and live in that supposed golden age post-World War II. I definitely wouldn't because I literally would not have a job because this whole YouTube thing didn't even exist back then because new industries are created over time just like well. Also, many Americans didn't have electricity, refrigeration, and other modern amenities that we kind of just buy into having now, yet we yearn for the past when that just was not the case. Not to mention better treatments for medical conditions, etc., etc. Everybody wants to go back to some mythical redistribution version of the past, but they don't actually want to live with the technology and the amenities of that time. With such staggering inequality, it's fair to ask should we abolish billionaires? No, Robert, it is not fair to ask because of staggering inequality. 
if we should abolish billionaires. That's absolutely ridiculous. It's incredibly creepy of a question to ask. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself being a politician targeting certain people because you don't like that they're more successful than you are. There are basically only four ways to accumulate a billion dollars, and none of them is a product of so-called free market capitalism. You know you're in a very fact-based video when it starts out by somebody saying there are basically only four ways to accumulate a billion dollars, and none of these ways involve free market capitalism. Well, there are basically only a few ways for a political hack like Robert Reich to make money, and none of them really involve telling the truth. Billionaires themselves aren't the problem. The real failure is in how our economy is organized. So when Robert Reich says that billionaires aren't the problem, the real problem is how our economy is organized. What he's actually saying is that the real problem is that he doesn't have more power over our economy. Remember, he is a government administrator. He wants to have more power in your day-to-day -day lives to make decisions for you, and he's angry that people are able to get rich without his thumb on the scale. One way to make a billion is to exploit a monopoly. Jeff Bezos is worth $150 billion. You might say he deserves this because he founded and built Amazon. Yes, 100%. Jeff Bezos deserves it because he founded Amazon. In fact, it is his direct managing of Amazon, since most of his net worth is tied up in Amazon stock, that represents his net worth. It is an indicator of how good of a job he did as a businessman. But let's hear Robert Rice talk about how Amazon is monopoly when it clearly isn't. But Amazon is a monopoly with nearly 50% of all e-commerce retail sales in America. And e-commerce is one of the largest sectors of all retail sales. Amazon is a monopoly because they have almost 50% of online retail sales within the borders of the United States of America. Just think about how ridiculous and absurd that sentence is. You know, a monopoly is supposed to be you have the entire market. Amazon doesn't, even by Robert Reich's own admission, have the entire market of online retail sales, which is very specific. If you go to overall retail sales, Amazon is around 30% because we do shop more and more online, but again, they're less than half of online. So how is that a monopoly? How does that make any sense at all? Now, while it makes no sense in any logical sense to call Amazon a monopoly just because they're a large corporation, and in fact, we have a long history of doing this in the United States of America. Remember 10 years ago, Walmart was the company that we all needed to be worried about. And then 10 years before that, Kmart was the company that we all needed to be worried about. And then 10 years before that, Sears was the company that we all needed to be worried about. Did you see when they built the tallest building in the world that was the monopoly that was unable to be competed against even though sears and kmart are bankrupt and now amazon is something we should fear more than walmart according to these people but knowing robert reich's background that he worked for the government that he's a political hack that actually wants more and more power it actually does make sense and has precedent to call Amazon a monopoly. You see, antitrust cases have been used historically in this country not to break up monopolies that were harming the consumer, but by overzealous regulators seeking to expand the power of the federal government. There have been antitrust cases filed on companies that have had 12% market share that have had 7% market share, and in one specific case on a company that was about to merge with another company to gain a grand total of 1% market share. And the way that they get away with this is by doing exactly what Robert Reich did, which was narrowly define the company that you're talking about in order to target them with oppressive regulations and antitrust lawsuits. So in one instance, I remember from Thomas Sowell's book, they were going after a shoe company that had very little market share, but what the regulators did was they defined the monopoly that this shoemaker ended up having as a monopoly in dress shoes made domestically within the United States of America. And this was done in an effort to raise their market share from below 10% to well over 50% in order to prosecute them for an antitrust violation that was not justified. Remember, they tried to do this to Whole Foods before Amazon bought Whole Foods, claiming that they had a monopoly not in grocery stores, but a monopoly in high-end, organic, mostly grocery stores. And Amazon's business is protected by patents granted Amazon by the United States government and enforced by government. If we had tough anti-monopoly laws, and if the government didn't grant Amazon so many patents and trademarks, Bezos would be worth far less. So then he goes on to say that Amazon has been granted way too many patents because for some arbitrary reason, 
Robert Reich has deemed that Amazon shouldn't have patents. And he takes it one step further and he says people like George Lucas and Oprah Winfrey shouldn't be billionaires because of their intellectual property. The same applies to people like George Lucas, Oprah Winfrey, or any other figure whose brand, ideas, or creations depend on copyrights and trademarks. So I'm gonna set Oprah Winfrey aside for a second because I don't really think that she falls very well into this category because Oprah Winfrey is the category herself. She's the product, she's the personality, she's what people want, and that's why she's actually wealthy. But in George Lucas's case, it's due to his intellectual property, and what we're talking about largely when we discuss this is obviously Star Wars. But why did George Lucas become a billionaire related to Star Wars when other filmmakers who have founded other franchises didn't get anywhere close to that level of wealth? The reason why George Lucas was so wealthy compared to other filmmakers even before he sold Star Wars, his crowning achievement in terms of intellectual property, to Disney is because back after the original Star Wars was released, George Lucas took a $500,000 pay cut in order to gain one thing from 20th Century Fox. Now Fox laughed at him at the time because the thing that George Lucas wanted that Fox deemed it not even worth $500,000 was the merchandising rights to Star Wars. Now you could say whatever you want about George Lucas as a writer and a director, because unlike the original trilogy, which George Lucas I believe only directed one of them, he actually wrote and directed all of the prequels and we know how those movies turned out. But what you can't talk crap about about George Lucas is how good of a businessman he is, how much savvy he has, because George Lucas not only made billions off the merchandising rights of Star Wars, but he created a whole new industry attached to intellectual property that even the big studios didn't suspect existed before. Remember, HBO almost broke down in the 11th hour the contract they had to adapt George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire into the hit TV show Game of Thrones because George R. R. Martin allowed another company to buy up the licensing rights for merchandise related to his books, and HBO deemed that the merchandising rights were enough to break down the entire contract for the show that, again, is one of the most successful intellectual properties that HBO has ever had. That's how valuable merchandising rights are now because of people like George Lucas, who back then foresaw this untapped market of collectors and geeks that want to be surrounded by children's toys. So Robert Reich can say that, oh, getting rid of the incentives to becoming a billionaire wouldn't have really hurt George Lucas. Capping the amount of money that he could make wouldn't have really stopped George Lucas from doing all the amazing things that he did in life and business. But in reality, if we had authoritarian moral busybodies like Robert Reich dictating the ceiling of what you could make, do you think George Lucas would have foregone a $500,000 pay increase in 1970 whatever dollars to get the merchandising rights for toys that he wouldn't even be able to profit off of. Which are laws that have been dramatically extended in recent decades. If these were shortened, these people would be worth far less too. Also, need I point out that Robert Reich himself is somebody who makes a living off of intellectual property? You think Robert Reich would be happy if you just decided to photocopy all of his books and start giving them away or selling them without the permission from him or his publisher? You think Robert Reich would be okay if you started pirating all the movies that he made? You think Robert Reich would be cool with it if you decided to download the videos from his YouTube channel and re-upload them for your own personal financial gain? It seems like Robert Reich is in the camp of intellectual property for me, but not for thee. A second way to make a billion is to get insider information unavailable to other investors. The hedge fund maven Stephen A. Cohen is worth an estimated $12.8 billion. Now, how did he do it? According to a criminal complaint filed by the Justice Department, insider trading at Cohen's SAC Capital was substantial, pervasive, and on a scale without known precedent in the hedge fund industry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Robert Reich, you're not gonna attack Stephen Cohen on this platform. I'm not gonna let you get away with that. In fact, you need to keep Stephen Cohen's name out of your mouth. For those of you who don't know, Stephen Cohen recently purchased the New York Mets. 
I have been a fan of the New York Mets since I was eight years old, and now we have the richest owner in Major League Baseball. Meaning, we traded for Lindor, money's not an issue anymore, no Wilponism, we're going for rings. So this Scranton, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia Philly, or Pittsburgh Pirate fan isn't going to talk crap about my owner and get away with it. Keep it out of your mouth, get out of here. Also, a little bit ridiculous that this guy's saying that all investors make billions did insider trading. Also, I'm not even really that against insider trading because I don't think laws that prevent information from getting into the market are a good idea. Don't get me wrong, I'm against it when people like Robert Reich in government insider trade and then propose new regulations in order to benefit their own finances, which happens all the time and should be criminal. But in the private market, not against it. Also, Stephen Cohen paid a fine. He didn't go to jail for it. The other people in his firm, it wasn't him. New York Mets, let's go. 2021 champions degromination. A third way to make a billion is to pay off politicians. The Trump tax cut was estimated to save Charles and David Koch, each of whose net worth is estimated to be about $50 billion, and their Koch Industries, one to $1.4 billion a year. So the next thing that Robert Reich is going to talk about is paying off politicians in order to get money and or favors or government contracts, and that making you a billion dollars. And to be fair, I am 100% against this. I'm against giving money to politicians so goons like Robert Reich can hand out favors through regulatory policy to benefit people who don't deserve it and wouldn't have earned that in the marketplace. However, Robert Reich is making the claim that this is how you make a billion dollars in America, yet he's going to say that the tax cuts, letting people keep their own money, somehow made the Cokes, who are already worth a combined at near $90 billion, billionaires. Makes no sense at all to me, but that's what Robert Reich is pushing in this video, and it's ridiculous. Coke Industries has also been a major beneficiary of government programs to fill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, provide roads and access to virgin growth forests, use eminent domain to seize private land for oil and gas pipelines, get oil subsidies, and profit off federal lands. Now look, whatever you think of any or all of these things that Robert Reich mentioned is up to you because the Strategic Oil Reserve is something that we have and it needs to be filled and I'd rather them contract out a company that knows how to deal with oil in order to fill it and I guess that's the Koch brothers. So that could be a handout, like everything the government does is kind of a handout, but it also could serve a purpose, just like military contracts. I think the oil subsidies thing is ridiculous and we should get rid of them. We shouldn't be picking winners and losers in the energy sector. But the most troubling thing out of all of this would definitely be the eminent domain thing. The federal lands thing is total nonsense because you pay the government for use of federal lands and the government shouldn't own all of the land that it owns. In fact, the federal government stole this land from a bunch of the states, mostly in the western part of this country. But if the Koch brothers use eminent domain under the Kelo decision, which was pushed by the left, that allows the government to seize private property not for public use, but for a public good that even includes selling it to somebody richer so you could get more tax revenue from it, then that's disgusting and they definitely shouldn't do that and nobody should do that. A fourth way to be a billionaire is to get the money from rich parents or relatives. About 60% of all the wealth in America today is now inherited. So one of the things I can't stand about people like Robert Reich is that he doesn't bother or the organizations that produce his videos don't bother to cite any of the sources that they talk about in the description of their videos or even on screen. So when I found this oddball stat of 60% of wealth in the United States of America being inherited, I had to go do some digging for myself. And apparently this comes from a weird book by some guy named Thomas Pinketty, who unsurprisingly advocates for radical redistributionist policies and of course had to develop his own metric for measuring inherited wealth because all the standard metrics used by other economists and governments around the world don't produce anywhere near such a high number as he came up with in order to sell his book. So Robert Reich, the non-economist, citing a book that has been called by critics a non-economics book to come up with a stat that some fringe guy just made up with his own metrics that are not commonly used by anybody to say 60% of the wealth is inherited. By the way, there's nothing wrong with inheritance at all. And the estate tax is so tiny 
that only two-tenths of one percent of estates were even subject to it in 2017. Because there's nothing wrong with people working to provide not just for themselves, but for their children or their grandchildren or their other relatives. The idea that because in Marx's Communist Manifesto it says we should abolish inheritance, that we should take away the incentive for families to take care of one another past the point when they die is absolutely ridiculous. Also ridiculous is Robert Reich complaining about how low the estate tax in the United States of America is. The United States of America is in the top five of the highest rates of estate tax across the country. If you die in the United States of America and you're wealthy and you have an estate or a company or anything, the government's going to jack 40% of that, of that money that you've already paid taxes on. And the estate tax is so tiny that only two tenths of 1% of estates were even subject to it in 2017. Now, not only is Robert Reich being incredibly deceptive by not telling you how much the United States government steals from people after they die in comparison to other nations around the world, but he's also advocating for the threshold of the estate tax to be lowered so it affects more and more people. Now, the reason the estate tax threshold was raised to 11 something million dollars is because what ended up happening when the estate tax was lower is people would have illiquid assets that were valued really high or over the threshold and they would be forced to sell those assets. A lot of family farms were valued at well over a million, two million dollars, but since it wasn't a liquid asset, people had to sell their generational family farms to mega agricultural corporations in order to just pay the estate tax. So essentially the government was robbing these people in multiple different ways. One, they were taking anywhere between, I think last year's it was 40%, but the highest I can remember it was 55% of people's assets because the relative that owned them died and they were forcing people into positions where they would have to sell those assets very quickly in order to pay the tax penalty. So they'd also get a lower than market value for those assets when they have to dump them on the market immediately under penalty of law from the IRS. And Robert Reich wants to go back to the time. He wants the threshold lowered so more and more people can be robbed or their families can be robbed after their relatives die. Needless to say, even when you set aside the false information in this video, it's ridiculous on its premise. The idea that we need to abolish billionaires or anybody at some arbitrary line from making a certain amount of money because some people are poor when people have always been poor and it's only been capitalism that has lifted people out of poverty is absolutely ridiculous. It's not a zero sum game. You're not poor because billionaires are rich or have billions of dollars. You'd likely be worse off without them, not better off. And the idea that we should let some useless washed up government bureaucrat like Robert Reich tell us how to run the economy is absolutely ridiculous. This man doesn't need any more power in government. He's not an economist and he should stop pretending to be more knowledgeable about these subjects than he actually is. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. If you liked the video, then show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on my social media accounts. They're linked in the description. Support me via the support accounts. Till next time.